Hello, my name is Zach Stauffer, and I will be presenting to you a informative speech about firefighting and the ups and downs that they, fa that they face and the unknown characteristics that people might not know about them. Firefighter saves a kitten from a tree. Firefighter saves a woman from a burning building. This may be your perception whenever it comes to firefighters. But to most, firefighting is more than just a job. It's dedication to people who are willing to put their lives on the line to ensure a better well-being for others. The stereotypical firefighter is known to just put out fires. But there's more to them than just putting out fires. I'll talk about this more in my speech. I've become a better I've become a firefighter this school year, and what this job has brought out of me is for the better. There are numerous different traits about firefighters that people do not know about. I'll be going through some of these. Some of them are integrity, communication, tolerance, and, tr and traits. Integrity is a very important is a very important for a firefighter as they need to be trustworthy, reliable, and accountable. This picture, wait, go back. Oh, I froze it twice. Duh. This picture, two in and two out. This is the rule that you typically go by on a fire scene. You jump on the engine, we typically have four people. You have a driver, a captain, and two in the back. Typically, they are firemen one certified, which allows you to run into a burning building with your air pack on. Now, the two in and two out rule. When you go into a burning building, you don't want to go and be by yourself because if you get trapped, then you're screwed. If you go in with a buddy, you have more eyes, more visuals, more senses. That's the idea behind the two in and two out. Now, the typical ages for a firefighter range from 14 to 70. It just depends on if you're aging, if you feel like you're ready, if you get hurt on the job, depending on what happens. So I have a story for you about my fire marshal that he used. I'm not going to quote him because he used very colorful language whenever he was telling us the uh, story again. But the one time there was a grass fire here in Heston. This was about five years ago. And he goes out with a very young, inexperienced firefighter. And he's been fighting fires for about 40 years at this point. He goes out there, jumps out, starts the pump for the engine and pulls the line out, the kid just runs away. He doesn't know where the heck he went, and that's where, insert colorful language. Um, after a while, he was fighting a tree fire that was on this side of him, and on this side, he just kept going back and forth because it's very hard to put out a tree because it gets so hot very quickly. Eventually, he found out where the kid was, and then the conversation they had was very colorful as well and after that needless to say the kid never ditched another fellow firefighter again <coughs> communication communication is very key when on fire scene for personnel to communicate between each other effectively and efficiently a very bad case of the communication would be last night at the grass fire that we experienced um, the grass fire was very um, jumbled together that did not flow how it needed to. There could have been potential, there was a definite potential death uh, hazards. Luckily no one died. We did lose a fire engine, we did lose a few houses, but no one got hurt. And it all started with our instant command, which is the head up of who everyone communicates to. And then communication in this sense needed to be more efficient because we were losing track of where everyone was, what all engines were there, we had no clue, so our staging was also wrong. Now to solve something like this, we have what's called the 800 system, which is what us as Heston is going to be going to, and this allows our communication to be spot on. We have different channels that we can communicate throughout ourselves, like as on a fire, that is just be us as Heston, and it won't be us here in Newton or Halstead or anything. So with this communication, it'll better the chances of no more risk to losing lives or any endangerment to anyone else. Uh, a very good example of communication was the Excel shooting. The Excel shooting was very traumatic, um, and it definitely won't be forgotten because you just don't forget something like that in a small town. 
the communication that we had experienced was whenever we heard, found out that the shooter was down, it took us about 10 minutes from the time that we went to the station to go to the actual scene because we did not know whether or not the shooter was down until that was communicated to us and we heard effectively that we could go and do our job. Tolerance. Tolerance as a firefighter helps build that brotherhood with your coworkers as they need to cooperate and operate, and operate together. On some fire scenes, you may not get along with your colleague. This is common, but at this point, it is crucial that you suck it up and get over it as they are the person responsible for pulling you out from a burning building or save you with oxygen if you run out. Um, the day of the Excel shooting, I was very mad at one of my fellow firemen because they did not show up and give support like they needed to at some previous class and I let them hear it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna repeat what I said. But as soon as we heard what was happening at Excel, we both went on the same ambulance to the scene and as soon as we got on there, all the tension that we had from that day was dropped because of that's who you're gonna trust in the long run. You trust them to save your life and you're gonna do the same as what they did to you. So all in all, in my speech, firefighters are more than just putting out fires, as many people may think. Their traits are what drive them to be the best they can and succeed at whatever is thrown at their way. It's a scary occupation to get into, but if you're doing it for the right reason, then you know you found 